Now we have an opening keynote speech. Uh, today we're very honored to have Mr. B.Y. Ekchin, Assistant Director, Electricity and Energy Efficiency, EMSD of Hong Kong SCR Government, to deliver the keynote speech and the topic is Living with Renewable Energy in Hong Kong. Mr. Chin is the branch head of the Electricity and Energy Efficiency branch of the EMSD. He is responsible for the development, implementation, and promotion of various energy efficiency and conservation, uh, EENC, and uh, renewable energy programs. As, um, as Mr. Ekchin needs to leave early, uh, we'll conduct a Q&A session right after. So please have your questions er ready by the end of the, his presentation. Now, let's put our hands together for Mr. Ekchin. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Can you hear me? Good morning, Linda, Felix, honorable guest speakers, ladies and gentlemen. It is my great honor to join this seminar organized by Green Council and share my view on living with renewable energy in Hong Kong. Uh, in this slide, you can see the rise and fall of cities were recurrent in our history. You might have heard about the Liulan Kingdom uh, in China, the one in China. Once a very prosperous city and finally turned into a ruined city because of the persistent drought and other serious environmental problems. In the year of Liu Lan, the earth was not so densely populated and over, overdeveloped like our earth today. I believe Liu Lan people should have been able to find a new place to settle and live after the fall of their city. Today, if the environment continues to worsen so much to an extent that our earth becomes no longer suitable to live, we have no choice but have to find another earth to migrate. Somehow an optimist may think human beings can do everything with our rapid advancement of technologies. It will not be difficult for our future generations to locate another earth in this boundless universe. Do you think it is realistic? In September this year, a good news telling us that the scientists finally found water on another planet. Uh, it is really like the Earth, and they called it KZ1X6. But this planet is 111 light years away from us. That is to say, evil traveling at the speed of light, the future human beings will travel over 100 light years to reach the planet, which is I think impractical, and therefore our Earth is irreplaceable. Therefore, for the well-being of our future generations, the only way out is to treasure our Earth and to take immediate actions to avoid irreversible impacts to it. I show you another well-known picture. I was very sad when I have it came to my sight. A starving polar bear walks on the brink of life and death. What went wrong? The rise in global temperature reduced the ice coverage, especially in the polar region, reducing the chance of polar bears to catch their prey, thus seriously affecting their chance of survival. From this graph, which is very famous to all of you, you can see the global temperature rises continuously since industrialization and even a big jump in recent decades. Other than the melting of ice mass at the poles and endanger the lives of polar bear in my pre previous slide, the global temperature increase brings disastrous consequences, endangering the survival of the Earth's animals and plants, including our human beings. Evidence show climate change is closely related to human activities, such as industrialization, urbanization, and overconsumption of natural resources. Climate change is a global challenge that calls for immediate, decisive, and robust actions. If no action is taken to correct the cause, the consequence will be irreversible. At world war level, to harness the range of climate change impacts, the Paris Agreement was signed in 2015. The agreements call for global actions 
aiming to keep global average temperature increase well below 2 degrees Celsius relative to pre-industrial levels and to pursue efforts to limit it to 1.5 degrees Celsius. In September this year, the United Nations Climate Change Summit, you can see from this picture, the 16-year-old Swedish teenage environmental activist, Britain, organized a global school climate strike and urged leaders of the government, business sectors, and civil society from around the world for stronger actions to beat global warming. Within our territory, Hong Kong has been in actions on the cause to battle against climate change. We have issued two reports. One is the Hong Kong's Climate Action Plan 2030 plus, which is issued in 2017, and the other one is Energy Saving Plan, which is issued in 2015. The plan outlines our long-term climate change actions and specifies our targets of reducing Hong Kong's carbon carbon intensity reduction by 65 to 70 percent by 2030 compared with the 2005 level. For the energy intensity reduction, we aim to reduce it by 40 percent from 2005 to 2025. You may know that coal is a major source of local emissions in the process of electricity generation. Therefore, the government has a coal phasing down plan to cut the coal in electricity generation from 40 per, 48% in 2015 to le less than 25% by 2030. Switching the fuel from coal to natural gas can effectively reduce carbon dioxide emission arising from electricity generation. Apart from phasing down coal-fired power plants, adopting of more green Renewable, renewable energy is one of our key policies on climate changes. Nevertheless, much of Hong Kong's terrain is hilly and is not suitable for <coughs> renewable energy development. Dense population and limited land space impose great constraints on RE development in Hong Kong. Despite these constraints, we want to overcome the challenge and to increase renewable energy shares in our fuel mix for the sustainable development of our city. In Chief Executive's Policy Address 2018, it has highlighted that the government has been taking the lead in adopting in developing new renewable energy and support the private sector in developing RE. Let me highlight some points about how government is taking the lead and in developing the algae and also how we help the private sector to develop algae. <clears throat> the government has taken the lead for many PV installations on building rooftops, sewage treatment works and reservoirs. We have earmarked 2 billion Hong Kong dollars to implement algae projects in government premises and will continue to actively pursue major algae projects including we are now planning for the large-scale floating PVs in our reservoirs at suitable locations in our reservoirs and also consider the feasibility of PV panel installation at suitable landfill site. Besides solar energy, waste can be a very important source of algae in Hong Kong. This is the picture of a tea park which make use of sludge from wastewater treatment as fuel to generate energy. The process will reduce greenhouse gas emissions and also sludge disposal volume. Food waste is another algae source that we can make use of it. About 3,600 tons of food waste is disposed in Hong Kong landfill site daily. The old park, which we call, um, it is for the organic organic waste. The old park has started for operation since 2018 to convert food waste into biogas as another source of renewable energy for electricity generation. Whilst the residues from the process can be produced as composite for landscaping and agricultural use. Another large-scale 
waste to energy plant to treat general municipal solid waste is expected to be in operation by 2024. Other than RE installation by the government and public sector, we also facilitate private sectors to adopt RE through the fit-in tariff and the RE certificate programs. Under the new scheme of control agreement between the government and the power companies, the fit-in tariff was introduced in end 2018 to encourage the public in RE installation. At end of September this year, around 5,300 fit-in tariff applications have been received. If with those all installed with PV panels, we will have the RE generation capacity of about 87 megawatt. In addition to joining the FIT scheme, the trade and community can show its support for RE by buying the RE certificates from the power companies. Besides FIT-in scheme by power companies, the government has also provided tax incentive for the business sector to promote development of their renewable energy. I'm glad to see more and more organizations are joining hands with the governments in RE installation. By the participation of FIT scheme, um, now we have Ocean Park, which they will have a full-scale development of about 900 kilowatt hours installation. Uh, with Chelsea, they also will install their PV system, Hong Kong Disneyland, they have a very ambitious plan and aims to become city's largest producer of solar power by end 2019 with a capacity of about 1.86 megawatt hours of electricity. According to a recent study on the potential of PV system on building roofs, there could be a high potential for village houses to install PV panels. On this, the government want to facilitate this and we have relaxed the highest limit from 1.5 meter to 2.5 meter. And this program was highly welcomed by village house owners, which you can see we have over 5,300 applications uh, by end of September this year. Solar and uh, schools and NCOs are important RE partners of the government. We launched the Solar Harvest Program in March this year to provide subsidy and a one-stop service to help eligible schools and welfare NGO for PV installation at their premises. Not only for RE generation, we hope that through the program, students and young people can get a better understanding of RE and to cultivate and harvest electricity together. On the other hand, the PV installed in school will enrich the teaching of STEM, that is the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, and also the environmental education. That will arouse the interest of our young people in exploring science and promoting low carbon living. EMSD with our strengths in EM field assumes as a facilitator and promoter role in RE development of Hong Kong. For example, we revised the technical guidelines on grid connection of our renewable energy power systems in 2016, and also published the guiding notes for solar PV system installation in 2018 for the trade and the public's reference. Moreover, a fifth section has been established in the EMSD website. I would like to invite you to visit the Hong Kong RE Nets, and in which you can find a lot of fit information, which we can share with the public, and also the application procedure, the list of contractors for renewable energy installation. We have also set up a telephone hotline in 2018, and over 1,500 inquiries were received up to the moment. Today, we have organized of about 50 briefing sections to the public and to the trades. Uh, since 2018 June, up to now, we have 
more than 8,500 participants have attended our sessions because they are very interested in the FIT program. For Hong Kong's future, we need to join hands with the communities to pursue more collaboration actions on renewable energy. Now in Hong Kong, our citizens can practice living with renewable energy together. It has to admit that due to the constraint of the Hong Kong environment, it may not be practical for everyone to make direct contribution and make own renewable energy generation in their home like some countries. However, it should have been our contribution if we could adopt green behaviors and practice in our daily life. Of course, if you have suitable open space like that of a village house, don't hesitate and add, install the PV panels and make the money through the fish scheme right away. Greta looks fearful, but her voice is very powerful. Our voice is powerful too. Your housing estate and your organization may not be well aware of the FIT scheme and the RE certificates. Tell them and encourage them to join this scheme with your voice. You can be a great promoter like EMSD, as well as a contributor to Hong Kong's renewable energy development. This is my last slide. Look at the world. The prospective of global renewable energy development is very bright. And uh, in one report, one forecast by the USEIA, that by 2050, it was told that around 50% of the world's electricity generation will come from renewable energy. Do you believe it? Yeah, I, for me, I believe it. But this rapid growth will call for a great breakthroughs on energy storage technology, which are considered very essential to catalyze more effective utilization and wider adoption of renewable energy in every aspect of our life. Hong Kong has so many talents. I hope more talents in our business and academic sectors will work on this challenging and promising technology and help achieve innovative and revolutionary development of the technology. Finally, I believe with our joint efforts, we do not need to search for another Earth, like the 1K, 100, 186, which is more than 100 light years away, or our future generation. In fact, what we do now is act for our future generation, and they can live in this lovely Earth like us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, sorry, Mr. Action. Uh, can you hold on for a sec? Um, Mr. Action, we have a Q&A session. Uh, thanks for uh, entering the, the Q&A questions and uh, with the QR code. I have some for you. Um, let's see. Uh, one of the questions is, would the government consider imposing minimum statutory requirements for renewable energy in new buildings? Uh, in fact, um, uh, we, we are, um, in fact, the government have a goal uh, for the renewable energy, which should be a mix of uh, different kinds of RE uh, technology, like the solar, uh, as well as um, uh, solar waste to energy, wind, etc. In fact, um, uh, because of so many constraints, in, uh, in, because Hong Kong is a very well-developed city, urbanized city, uh, high, highly densely populated with high-rise buildings, uh, the shielding effect uh, will affect uh, different buildings. Therefore, uh, we, we will encourage um, uh, we will encourage the citizen to install the PV panels. And uh, I think at the moment uh, we will do the promotion and facilitation work. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, we have a few more questions. Uh, will renewable energy be included in other government quasi government infra infrastructure such as service reservoirs, new roadside noise enclosures, MTR station? noise barrier and depot roofs and new capital works? Uh, in fact, um, uh, we, we see there are a lot of chances of renewable energy installation, like um, uh, uh, the questions raised like uh, in the reservoir. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, uh, we have a big project, which is uh, in our plan, is to install floating PV 
in the reservoirs. In fact, uh, last year we have the pilot projects of a small scale, small scale uh, pit floating PV panels in uh, two reservoirs to test it out uh, how we can uh, have it uh, installed uh, in, in future for the larger scale. Therefore, um, in fact, we, we have a, a plan in mind for a large scale floating PV. For the other ones, like um, in the um, MTR and also um, uh, in other, like the Lloyd's area, in fact, uh, uh, the government, uh, we have also collaborated with other academics and other uh, institutes to carry out tests on, those, on the feasibilities of installing those uh, installations. Uh, if, if it is successful, it, it will be a good chance to have it um, to, to scale up. Uh, just like um, uh, uh, I have just mentioned in my slides that uh, we also have, have uh, uh, study and also uh, we try to install the PV panels also in the landfill sites try to uh, see the results, uh, how, how much electricity can be generated from it. Yeah. Uh, for the entire Hong Kong renewable energy scene, uh, why can we see more uh, wind or even uh, water renewable energy? Uh, in fact, um, uh, the, I, I think uh, at the moment, Hong Kong, uh, we do not have much um, uh, wind power. Uh, the Hong Kong Electric, they have installed a 500 kilowatt uh, wind farm uh, in the Lama and uh, in the land Lama Island in the Lama Island, and in fact, um, uh, the government uh, they have also uh, collaborated with the two electricity company to carry out uh, wind measurement and also study on the uh, uh, wind farm technology uh, in Hong Kong. Yeah. Okay, uh, two more questions. Sorry, um, is it a dream for Hong Kong to achieve net zero uh, emissions for a carbon dioxide before twenty one zero zero? I think uh, for, for achieving <laughs> long time away. <laughs> and in fact, um, I think uh, it is a dream for, for everyone, uh, for everyone in uh, different parts of the world to achieve the uh, uh, net zero carbon, uh, the zero carbon uh, dream. Uh, in fact, uh, it will all depends on the technologies that we can develop. And we need many innovative uh, ideas, innovative technology to make this, uh, to drive this. Last question. Um, would the impact, uh, what impact will result from the exit of the United States from the Paris Agreement uh, happen recently? <laughs> I, I cannot say on behalf of, <laughs> of the US. In fact, um, I, I just want to call one thing. Uh, in fact, uh, Hong Kong China is also uh, one member economies in the APEC, uh, Asian Pacific Economic uh, I can't remember the full name. APEC, okay, just APEC. <laughs> in fact, um, in the APEC regions, um, we have uh, a total of 21 uh, APEC economies. In fact, uh, all the economies we are working very closely, uh, including US. Um, uh, I'm not going to say on behalf of US, but I think uh, uh, among the APEC economies, we are working very closely to achieve uh, two targets, the aspirational goal. One is the reduction of the energy intensity by 45% by 2035, and also uh, by 2030, uh, the doubling of the RE goal, which uh, is what we, we are doing now. Okay, thank you, Mr. Action. Thank you very much. Thank you.